Hello mate and welcome to another video. In this one we're going to cover the basics of copyright law. I'm going to be focusing on UK copyright law simply because it's the one that I'm most familiar with. However, you can generally find that most copyright law is fairly similar country to country and each government's website generally has information required. So as you can see here from the government's website overview on copyright, copyright protects your work and stops others from using it without your permission. And that's quite important as game developers and artists that we understand that not only is our work copyrighted, but also the work of other people. So if you're a game developer who is borrowing resources from somewhere else, then you may very well be coming into conflict with copyright law. Now I'm aware that um, certain types of game developer are pretty notorious for ripping off other people's work in terms of borrowing of assets etc. However, if you want to take game development seriously this is something that you really do need to focus your attention on and get a firm understanding of. And the most important point really here on the overview is that copyright is something that you automatically get. You don't have to pay for it. You don't have to send a letter to yourself with proof of creation. The fact is that if you create something that is completely original and is copyrightable, you automatically get it. So if you ever get approached by someone via email or something claiming that they can offer you copyright protection, it's a complete scam. Don't fall for it you automatically get copyright and most of the time you can locate breaches of your copyrighted material of your of your IP simply by browsing forums or using Google and if you find someone that's distributing your work um, without permission without a license to do so then they are in violation of copyright. This also means that legally you are protected if for example you find out that someone's distributing your work I know for a fact that there are websites that do so and they are they hide their content behind Patreon paywalls or whatever and they're offering your games for free. They are in breach of copyright and regardless of what their DMCA rep says, usually the guy who runs the website will just respond saying, oh, you need to provide proof, blah, blah, blah. The fact is, if they're distributing your copyrighted work, they are breaking the law and you have got course to well sue if you so choose um, generally speaking it's a lot of time and money for very little return however they are legally obligated to remove your work from their website if they are distributing it without your permission and this covers pretty much everything whether it's videos or sound and music or just written work games would fall under literacy dramatic musical and artistic work including artistic uh, illustration and photography um, and original non-literary written work such as software web content and databases so those are the things that you are covered for how copyright protects your work as we can see here copyright protects people from copying your work distributing copies of it whether free or charged or for sale so in other words, it doesn't matter whether they're making money from it or not. If they're giving away your stuff, then they're breaking the law. Also, it means if you're using someone else's artistic stuff in your game or your artwork and you're giving it away, you're also breaking the law. So again, something very important there to note is that regardless of uh, whether they're making money out of it or not, they're still breaking the law. And as I said, most countries have pretty much the same law in terms of copyright. So it doesn't matter whether they're in Bermuda or if they're in central London. The fact is, if they're giving away your stuff on their website, they're breaking the law. One thing that a lot of people fall foul of is a misunderstanding how long copyright lasts. A lot of people will believe that it only lasts for a couple of years. Once it's been out for a couple of years, it becomes public domain. That's just not true. Remembering that written dramatic musical and artwork is pretty much what we fall under. 70 years after the author's death is the how long copyright lasts. That means that if someone created something a couple of years ago and it's been out for a while and no one really looks at it anymore, it's still copyrighted. 70 years after the author's death is a very long time. So again, it's really important not to fall foul of this because a lot of people will assume that it, it's safe to just rip off someone else's stuff 
if it's been out for a couple of years, particularly things like non-copyright music and um, video clips from websites, but it's just not. Even non-copyright music, though it may be called non-copyright music, is still copyrighted. All it means is that the person who wrote the music isn't going to pursue you for using their music as long as you use it within the terms of use. Usually uh, usage policy means that you'll credit them in the credits of your video or your game or whatever if you're going to use their music but again it's very important to remember that it's still copyrighted just because it's called no copyright doesn't mean it isn't copyrighted it just means that they won't sue you for using their stuff as long as you credit them that usually means that they've waived the moral right you can keep or waive your moral rights which include the right to be identified as the author of the work object to how the work is presented so for example some non-copyright musicians take offense to their work being used in uh, games or or artwork of an adult nature um, and again this is something that you have to check on because if you're using someone else's music or someone else's um, artwork then that would fall into this area if they're not happy with how you're going to use it. Remember that any piece of artwork, even hotel art, when you walk into a hotel and you see all the art that's on the walls, if you were to take a photograph of that artwork, then technically the photograph's copyright would be owned by the originator of that artwork because you're replicating their work. So if you're buying assets from the Daz Studio store, for example, and you're using the bog standard textures for the artwork that's in the room then technically the person who created the original artwork will be in charge of the copyright of that it's very sketchy area very gray area so what i would advise to you is whilst using das studio to create assets for a game um, or just creating simple artwork using das studio is fun and enjoyable um, if you start trying to make money from it you have to be extremely careful and i would strongly recommend using your own assets creating your own assets or your own textures for those assets so that you don't accidentally fall into the trap of somebody else owning your work and then the last thing that we see on uh, the uk government's website is comments about stopping people from using your work now the important thing to note here is that if you think someone is using work but they don't know you own the rights i.e um, quite often you will hear people use the excuse that they don't know who the copyright owner for a piece of work is. In the UK, for, for example, they have to apply for a license to use work where they don't know who the copyright holder is. And then you can, uh, the person who's the copyright owner may be able to check the licenses register to see if anyone has licensed the work or is in the process of applying for a license, which then allows you to either have it stopped or claim a license fee because you have to pay a license fee if you're going to use someone else's copyright work. So certainly in the UK anyway, ignorance is not a good enough excuse. Um, you have to apply for a license to use something that you don't know who the copyright owner is. Um, and you can, there are different sort of recourses that you can take if you find out that somebody is using your copyright work. You can see the information for the UK stuff down here at the bottom of this page. If you're not in the UK, then I would strongly advise you visit your own government's website, check on the copyright rules, and then look for the information that you can find there. Because the, this, the important thing to remember here is that copyright is a very serious business and it is a very, very, very big bill if you get caught stealing someone else's IP. I think there was a case not that long ago in the UK of someone having to pay a hundred thousand pounds, so actually is fifteen hundred fifteen hundred thousand um, dollars for basically misusing someone else's uh, copyright, and you know that's basically enough to bankrupt that person um, for a very long period of time. So take it seriously. If you are going to take game development seriously as a job then these are things that you need to read up on and make sure you fully understand before you get yourself into trouble. It's always better to play it safe than get caught and then claim ignorance because as it says on pretty much all of the websites, ignorance is not an excuse. All right, guys, thanks very much for watching. I hope you found that useful. Let me know what you think in the comments below and I will see you in the next one. But until then, you take damn good care of yourselves, all right? Bye-bye.